In today's video, we'll be learning the elements of an underwater scene which will guide us to create our underwater scenes inside DAS Studio. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Palmy and if you're new here, I'm here to help you to guide you on your DAS Studio journey so you can become the best 3D digital artist that you can be. So continuing on with the water theme, we are going to be looking at underwater scenes. And before we do that, what I want to do is just explain that everything on this channel, right, is just a, a way of doing something, right? There is a solution to a problem and there are a million solutions to a lot of problems. This is just another toolkit, another tool belt you can add to your already available tool list. That is a lot of tools, by the way, I know. But uh, that's gonna add to your like your kit, right? So you can be like, oh, if I need to do something like this, Palmy's already shown me how to do it on this video, so I can just go to this video and I can just find it and then I can just put it into my my render, right? Because it's already there. So you're just adding things to your tool, but that's what we're doing, right? With these videos, we're just generally every week we are adding to our toolkit, we are learning more, and that's how you make progress, folks. So. What I want to do before we begin and show you how to make underwater scenes, I want you to think about the properties of water under underwater, right? Underwater scenes are very different to the way overwater scenes are. And we're going to go through some of the considerations we have to think about before we um, create our scenes. And a great example I'm going to use for this is a film which you've probably heard of. I'm pretty sure you may have heard of. It's called Finding Nemo. And in Finding Nemo, uh, by the way, this is a great film. Um, if you haven't seen it, oh my God. Go and watch this film right now because it has all the elements of great storytelling inside here, right? If you're creating your graphic novel, you're creating your visual narrative, you're creating some sort of story, watch this film. Understand the comp the stories, right? The story, the seven parts of the framework story. They have the seven parts of the framework story inside here, and this is gonna help you to create your story. Alright, so if you're if you want to create stories, go watch from the greats. Right, go watch those great stories, learn from them and apply what you've learned and that's how you're gonna improve and create those wonderful, beautiful stories you want to create. Now, moving on from that, the reason why we're looking at Finding Nemo is because Pixar are one of the best, right? In terms of technology, I think this movie came out in 2003, four or five, something like that, I can't remember. Um, link, uh, write down in the comments, let me know if you've seen this movie or if you haven't seen this movie, write that down in the comments and when it was made, because uh, I'm pretty sure it's 2004 or five. Not too sure. Well, maybe you can write down in the comments. So what I want to show you is Pixar has spent many, many, um, you know, uh, months, years, understanding how water works and we're going to learn from them, right? They've already done the work for us. We just need to learn from what they've already done. So this is what we're going to be doing here. Right. So let's dive into this, this, uh, this screenshot here. What can we see here regarding the properties of underwater seeds? Okay. So the first thing we can see is obviously we've got light coming down and we've got these like, like light underneath here, right? These light beams. Now these are called causistics. Fancy word I know, we don't need to know about the fancy word. All we need to know is this is the reflection of the light coming through the water and hitting the seabed here, okay? And that will only happen if there is a short distance. So if there is a very, very short distance from the top of the water to the bottom of the seabed, that's the only time you will see causistics. You will not see causistics lower, lower down uh, as we as I show you through the next uh, couple of um couple of uh, screenshots, you will not see any light, right? Because the light gets absorbed the more you go down into the depths of the ocean, which is why when people go down to the depths of the ocean, you need to have your own light. You can't see anything because the light is being absorbed. So that's consideration number one, light, right? So depending on how your scene is, the depth of your water, consideration will be what kind of light you're gonna be using, how you're gonna light that scene, all right? So number one, lighting. Number two, Look at the back of this scene, right? Notice at the back of the scene. We can't see all the way to the back here, right? I can't see all the way to the back. Why can't we see all the, all the way to the back? Because again, it's to do with light, right? It's not like we're in, uh, we're looking like as we do, uh, you know, the, as the further we look away, the more like blurry things get in water, in underwater. So you gotta take that in consideration. So over here, you gotta like make this blurry. And the way we can do that is quite easy. We can use like depth of field and things like that to make this blurry and make it so it's 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 further away, right? We can't see things in the distance. There's a the number of ways to do that. So that's number two, the distance of what you can see. So those are the two things in this one here. Let me move on to the next one here. This one here, I like this one. Uh, it's one of my favorite characters in Finding Nemo. I do like the turtles in Finding Nemo, so I gotta put it in there. Big fan of turtles because of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Grew up watching them. Awesome, awesome. So here we've got like these bubbles as well, right? Air bubbles. 
So that's a consideration to think about as well. That's only if you're doing close-up scenes. If you're like far away, right, you're probably not going to see those bubbles because they are very, very small. Now, these are air bubbles, water bubbles, okay? So when we have um, our human characters in our scenes, uh, chances are they're going to need to have water bubbles when they're swimming. So you're going to have to create that. There are a number of ways to do that as well. Um, there's some props you can buy from the Dad's Video Store. You can do that using post work, uh, using uh, the Photoshop brushes. So there's a number of ways to do that. Fantastic, okay. Uh, let's move on to the next one here. Um, I think this was just to show you what uh, it looks like. So here we've got the water, right? We've got the underwater here. And at the top, you've got the, the the top of the water here, right? So you've got the waves here and everything, okay? So if you're doing a scene like this, consideration is you're going to have to have the waves there somehow and fit that in. If you're going to do a scene like that, we're not going to do a scene like that. We're going to focus basically on like an underwater scene. That's what I'm going to be focusing on. All right, next one here. Uh, this is the one I'm talking about now. So here, there in this part of the story, right, in Finding Nemo, they're in the bottom of the ocean. There is no light, all right? It's dark here, as you can see. And the only light is this thing here, right, from this creature here. Um, that's the only light. So that's the consideration I was talking about. The more lower depths you go into of the water, the less light there is. You're going to have to have something that has that light. Also, what you'll notice are there some things here, these white spots, which are the particles, kind of like dust, right? Again, a number of ways you can add that into your scene. Um, I think you could do that using the props using uh, from Dash Studio. I personally put that in during post work. It's just so much more easier and you have more control over that. Okay, again here, light. So in terms of light, at the back we can't see anything, right? Look at the distance, right? We're in the bottom of the ocean and there's, uh, there, is, um, there is nothing. We can't see in the back, right? It's dark pitch black right there's no light getting through so you're probably wondering where is this light coming from and remember this light was coming from that creature we just saw in the previous uh, in the previous uh, scene here that was the creature that was providing this light here otherwise there would be no light under the water so you've got to think about that and again here we got those wonderful like light rays all right so we're going to be doing that those light rays we already know how to do that they're like god rays all right so if you've gone through that tutorial god god rays tutorial um, I'll put the link here in the top right. Go and watch that. But we will be going through that again anyway in this tutorial. So that's going to be awesome. And there we are. We're back to the beginning here. So those are the considerations um, to think about when you create the war scene. I know it's quite over overwhelming, but we're not going to be doing all of them right in today's tutorial. Otherwise, this tutorial will be six hours long. If you want a tutorial that's six hours long, leave a comment down below. And I will do a tutorial that's six hours long if you really want super, super in-depth detail. But for now, we're going to cover the basics. So at least you can get some really, really cool water scene, underwater scene, sorry, for your portfolio. Uh, because a lot of us don't do underwater scenes. I, I think it's one of the things you should do to understand the, the complexities of water and what you can actually achieve with Dash Studio, right? We're going to push the limits here. So let's jump into Dash Studio. So we're back inside Dash Studio. Here is the scene, very similar to the scene that I had in the um, overwater tutorial it is available free part of Dash studio if you want to follow along with this tutorial uh, smart content tab environments uh, preload here that will all be seen fantastic i've got my camera here as well nothing fancy with the camera it's just here all set up now we're ready to go so taking all the things to, into consideration that we just talked about earlier regarding all those things let's try to add as many as we can um, inside Dash Studio. Obviously, there are some things I prefer to add in Photoshop or GIMP, whatever you use, right? Because it's just easier and you can get the same effect. There's nothing wrong with using post work, folks. Absolutely nothing wrong. But if you understand the basic foundation inside Dash Studio, your renders will look so much better. When you get it into Photoshop, you won't have to do that much to it and you can make them look a hundred, you know, like 10 times better in Photoshop and you won't have to do that much work right inside Photoshop. And this is where we need to learn those foundations. So, the first thing we need to do is create our uh, underwater uh, scene, which create our water for the scene. So the way we do that is to use a cylinder primitive. You can use a sphere primitive as well. I've done it with both. Uh, not recommended to use a primitive cube. It doesn't work that well. So your two options are really a primitive cylinder or a primitive sphere. If you if you believe there's another way or you believe that I'm saying something wrong, that's fine. Put in the comments down below. I'm loved, I love to learn. I am always learning. So if you have any uh, contradictory evidence, uh, please put that in the comments so everybody can learn because that's what we're all here to do, to learn, to get better, to improve, to progress on our journeys. So let's import, uh, create that uh, cylinder, create 
new primitive and cylinder okay now this is the one of the very few times where i will say use these settings for your cylinder so your your length your diameter your segments and your sides please use these settings as a base for your cylinder and you can always scale it um, if you need to to do your underwater scenes but this is what i recommend because the settings that i'm going to use later on will uh, correlate to the settings of this cylinder so very important very very few times but i also will say please use these settings for when you're creating your cylinder okay cool fantastic so let's click on accept here here is my cylinder so what I want to do with my uh, cylinder is first I want to turn it off because I don't want to select it right I don't want to keep going that yellow thing that yellow thing flashy thing is kind of annoying when you're trying to do a tutorial so um, obviously I want to bring it down and uh, we want to you know put it roughly in the middle of the scene it doesn't need to be like bang on in the middle like it doesn't need to be oh this is the center of the cylinder it needs to be exactly no 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 it just needs to be roughly all right so I'm gonna just like guesswork so that's fine, right? I'm happy with that. As long as my main area is in that scene, that's fine. Okay. So uh, let me just move on to something very important, which is the camera position. There is the camera, right? This camera here, I'm gonna just move it more closer so you can see it. One of the very, very important things to notice first is this camera here must be, whatever camera you have, right, for your scene, it must be outside of this water uh, cylinder that we're going to create right our water it must be outside if you take it inside things start to go a bit awry start to look a bit weird it has to be outside so it doesn't have to be like all the way out here it just needs to be outside right it could literally be right like 10 centimeters away from the edge that's fine um, outside of the cylinder right it could be right here it doesn't matter what matters is it must be outside so that's number one rule number one these are some rules uh rule number one your camera must be outside of this cylinder um primitive of this water that we're going to create there we go all right we got that fantastic okay so let me go to back to my camera which is actually far away let's go to surfaces now and let's create our water uh, for our underwater seed so uh, clicking on my cylinder go to surfaces again we're going to do what we did before in the overwater tutorial I'm going to click on my uh, surface of cylinder I'm going to go to presets just use a shortcut um, eye ray liquids and water just a shortcut just to change the settings. I mean, I could have changed them. We could have changed them ourselves, right? We know what they are. 1.33 is for water. Refraction weight is one because water is see-through. Um, we need to do that. Now, this is where the setup is different. So let me put on the IRA uh, preview. Fantastic. Okay. Um, let's go down here so you can see what I am trying to show you with the IRA preview on. So the transmitted measurement distance, we're gonna be using these settings. We're gonna start off with a value of 500, right? I recommend with this cylinder that we've created with those specific values, 500 is your starting point. Okay, that is a value to start off with. Transmitted color is where we're going to actually control the water, right? The color of the water. So we're gonna click on this and I'm just gonna put this up to all the way to, to brightness. Now, with this transmitted color, it is very important you stay at very low values so very um the brightness it needs to be like you need to stay in this kind of area here right so this kind of area you don't want to go up here i'll show you why you don't want to go up there very shortly so let's try to get something bluish look it's very 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 light um bluish there right saturation very low saturation of that color all right that's blue there now the reason why i say very light colors is because you can control the 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 actual color uh, using the tran transmitted measurement distance. So if I did lower values, lower values for this, it'll be a uh, dark color. So if I went to like something like 200, you'll see how blue it starts to get. If I go really low, like 50, you're getting different, right? What we are doing with this, which is really, really cool, is we're getting like um, the discoloration, okay? So in water, obviously, uh, where there is no light, it'll be darker. Where there is light, it'll be lighter. And that's what we're getting with this transmitting measurement distance. Uh, really, really cool. So you can control it like that. So that's why I recommend you use a transmitting measurement distance to control the lighting you want. Once you've chosen your color, right, it could be green color you wanted or whatever color you wanted. Um, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna leave it at 500 because I like this color. Uh, if we went to transmit the color and a bit darker, say like, hey, I want this kind of blue. You see how it get see how it goes. It goes a bit too dark. Um, 
I recommend you stick with one. So I recommend you go with a lighter color here and control the actual color of the water using the transmitted measurement distance. It's a bit more accurate using that method. Um, scattering measurement distance. Uh, we're going to start off with a value of 50. And then subsurface scattering amount, we're going to start off with a value of 0 0.01. And as you can see now, we're getting that dusty kind of mess that we saw the particulates, those particles. Um, and this is going to help with our causistics, right? It's going to get us a really cool light rays and the causistics as well. Um, this is very similar to that God Rays tutorial, but I think this is better now because I've had a bit more practice with that. So I'm getting better results. So you can go watch that God Rage tutorial. I'll put the link up there. If you want to stick around to this one, that's fine as well because I'm getting better results now because obviously better understanding, working with these things, you improve, right? So that's all about progress, folks. Just keep practicing. The more you kind of get these values and things, the more you start to understand how things work and that's how you get better, right? That's how you make progress. Uh, SSS direction, we want 0 0.5 as a starting value. Um, and all that is, is the subsurface scattering direction, which is we want the light to go, I think 0 0.5, the light goes, uh, it goes towards away, sorry, it goes towards the light, right? It goes towards, the subsurface scattering goes towards that uh, origin of that light, I believe. Uh, if that's wrong, let me know in the in the, uh, in the the comments below. Um, like I said, I'm more than willing to learn. Um, more than happy for you to put down your thoughts in the comments below. Okay, so we've got our color of the water. Um, what I'm gonna do is just go, I'm going to go like a slightly greeny color. Yeah, that's kind of cool. All right, we'll go with that kind of color. That's fine. Cool. Okay, so we've got our uh, water, so to speak. Our camera is outside as well. That's absolutely fine. Uh, outside of the scene. So I could have something like this, maybe. I could zoom in a bit more. All right, it's still outside the scene. All right, there it is. Well, well outside the scene. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is our lighting. Right, so for this, we're gonna be using a, a spotlight. So create new spotlight. All right, and then let's uh, move this spotlight to wherever we want it. Now this spotlight needs to be um, outside of the primitive as well, of our primitive cylinder. So we can see our cylinder there. It needs to be outside. So anything, so very similar to where the camera is, it needs to be outside. So you can put it anywhere, right? Anywhere you want this, this causistics to happen. We're gonna do the causistic lighting. So I'm gonna put it somewhere here. That is fine. Um, and then let's go to our camera. And then now let's go to uh, our preview. Let's go to our uh, render settings and environment. And I only want scene only, right? I don't want uh, the dome or anything. Just want scene only, which means only the scene lights will work, things like spotlights, uh, emissive lights. That's the only thing that will work now. So as you can see, I uh, can't see anything because our spotlight is very dim. So let's go to parameters. Let's whack that setting up. So one of the important settings when it requires, you're requiring causistics is your light geometry it must stay at point. So we want very harsh lighting to get through all of that, uh, get through the water uh, volumetric uh, volumetric cylinder that we created with the water as well so it must be point uh, and now the flu uh, the flux the lumens we're just going to put this very high values i want to go something like five million just to get it up and running okay that's fine cool okay so that's fine for now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna change these settings anyway all right so the next thing is how are we going to add the causistics and for that we are going to use a primitive plane so we're going to go to create new primitive plane, choose plane from here. All right. Uh, in terms of settings, yes, size one meter. Yes. Divisions one is absolutely fine. These are the settings for your plane. Please use these, accept. All right. There's my plane. Oh, and what I want to do is I want to parent my plane to my spotlight. So click on my spotlight, drag it up, sorry, click on my plane, drag it to my spotlight and let go. And now it's parented. As you can see, it's kind of like gone underneath it. Fantastic. So these values, we just want to put to zero. So Alt, click on these, left click, because I want it to be at the position of my uh, my spotlight. I'm just going to zoom in here a bit more so you can see. All right, so what we need to do first is we need to tilt our spotlight, our plane, sorry. So it's kind of like covering um, our spotlight. So basically what we do is we're creating like a filter 
We're putting a filter in front of that spotlight. And from that, it's like very similar to the tutorial I did using the um, gel lights. So we're literally using a gel light, right? That's all we're using. You're putting like a, you do, you're putting like an image in front of that gel, in front of that light. And then when that light goes through that gel, it's going to give you an effect on the, whatever the floor is, right? That's all it is. Uh, that's all we are doing. We are simulating causistics. Um, that's what we are doing. So um, X rotate for that causistic plane that we're going to be using is going to be 90. Okay. The Z translate, right? Because we need to put it in front of that light. Um, I'm going to give you a value of minus 30. That's a, that's a good start. Okay. And now we need to add a cutout for this, right? We need to add our pattern to this plane because at the moment there is no pattern. It's just a, uh, it is just a, uh, a, a primitive plane that is a solid, all right? There's no holes for the lights to go through. So we're gonna go to surfaces, click on our plane, editor plane. We're gonna go to cutout opacity, click here, and we're gonna go to browse. Okay, so this uh, link in the description down below, this is uh, slightly few things added here to this, um, to this package. This is very similar to the water, um, water um, that you downloaded, the water freebie that you downloaded in the overwater tutorial. It's the same thing, just a couple of um, add additions to this regarding causistics. So you may, you'll probably, you should, I recommend you download it again because it's got these anyway. Um, so in terms of causistic patterns, this here was downloaded from the textures, the website 3D Textures. I'll put the link in the description down below. It's a really good website. This is free, right? It's only a 1K texture, but it's good enough, right? We don't need 4K for this. We just need something that looks like a causistic pattern. So if you go to preview here. Now, although this is where you're like thinking outside the box comes, this is where the more you do something, the more you understand something, the more you don't, the more you realize there's other ways to achieve your goal. So what I'm trying to say with that uh, is, this is made for ground, right? So cracks in a ground. However, if you look at our causistic pattern, this looks very similar to a causistic pattern, meaning the lines will look like this. Okay, these black lines we're interested in because that's where the cutout's going to be. The white is not gonna be cut out, it's gonna be the black, right? You've got uh, the causistic pattern here, like a simulating the causistic pattern, which is absolutely fine. So this is where you start thinking outside the box, your intermediate thinking, right? This is not beginning thinking, this is intermediate thinking. We've had a, we've had a couple of uh, years under our belt and now we're pushing our knowledge further and we're starting to see things that we couldn't see before because we have that previous knowledge. So we're gonna be using this. Uh, this is the occlusion, um, occlusion texture here, which works very well, right? Sometimes we don't need to use uh, certain things. We can use certain textures in different elements inside our our tab and, we, and our surfaces and we can get excellent results. So really, I really do highly recommend playing around with these and understanding that anything you see a channel like this, right, or like a slot, you can get some amazing effects by doing, by just changing, by adding these maps, right, by adding these textures, you can do some crazy, you can do some crazy things, like really, really innovative things. So here it is, that's added. There you go, all right. So let's go back to our camera. Do our iRib preview. We should see some causistic patterns. Uh, what we need to do now is we need to boost the, um, what we need to do is boost that. So, because my spotlight is really far away. So 200 and I need to boost up that. Like it's way too low. Okay, so this is what I meant. We need to change the spotlight settings, right? Because it's just, it's just so, it's just, um, so far away. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to decrease the angle as well so we can get more brighter right, spotlight there. And now what I want to do as well, the lumens flux is I'm going to change that five to a nine because it's not bright enough. All right. So let me just go to the filtering. It's not on, right? So let me just turn on poise post the denoiser so it could just quickly show you that. Is it gonna show you? Okay, it's not doing a very good job, post denoises. Stop you from seeing that. No worries. Okay, so that's our causes to pattern. Obviously when we render it, you'll be able to see that. Um, so that's our brightness. Now we get those light rays. Okay, so where is that one with the light rays? Uh, there it is, right, it's still light rays. 
we're getting those light rays because of the volumetric cylinder. Gives you the light rays, gives you the dust. All right, that's the only way you're going to see that. So we are getting that. Fantastic. Okay, I'm just wondering why we can't see the the causistics. Uh, what I want to do is obviously re increase the tiles as well. Remember, we compare with the tiles of the causistic plane. So what I want to do is just increase that and see what happens. And we'll do the same for the tiles. Actually, let's do it the other way. 0 0.5, 0 0.5. We'll make it really, really. Uh, yeah, we'll do 0 0.5. Oops. All right. All right. So there we have a wonderful light rays coming through, and you'll see the causistic pattern there. Um, and let me just put these. up some of these settings on that fine all right so we've got a light coming through you'll see the causistics here very shortly cool and what i'm going to do now is just change that uh cylinder from the green to the blue actually because i don't think it doesn't look that good all right cool that's fine okay so that causistic patterns will be there on our rock there um, obviously we can't see it yet. Um, what I'm going to do is turn on the, the pause denoiser again. It's looking very blurry there because of the... There, okay. That's absolutely fine. We can sort that later. But you're going to get the causistics now, right? Coming on there. Fantastic. And it re may require you to move the plane around and move things around. And we can always change the horizontal and vertical tiles. Um, so you can play around with these tiles, right? You get different effects with the tiles. All right, it's really, really cool. Okay, so that's fine. I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, what I'm going to do now is, now we've got those light rays coming through and everything, there are a few other missing pieces we need to add. And at the moment, uh, it just looks like a normal scene, right? It just looks like um, a god ray scene and the light is blue and it doesn't look very watery or underwater. And that's what we need to do next. So what we need to do next is we need to add uh, another plane to our, ca our camera, a primitive plane, which is going to give you the underwater effect now. So this is where we add the underwater effect. So we're going to go to create new primitive and plane again. Again, same same settings. Okay, now this plane here, we're going to parent to our camera. All right. Again, this is like a filter now. We're adding a filter. So imagine when you're you're in your post work or when you're on Instagram or social media, you're adding your filters. This is what we're doing here. We're going to put a filter in front of our camera, which is going to give us the effect we want of underwater. So here it is. Uh, I'm going to go to parameters. Again, we're going to put these values to zero because I want them to be right at the camera. X rotate for this plane for our camera. The one that's uh, parented to our camera is going to be again 90. Okay. And our Z translate is going to be minus 100 as a starting value. Again, you can change this. There it is, all right. As you can see, it's blocking our view. So what we need to do with this is we need to um, go to surfaces for that plane. Um, we need to go to presets and we're going to add our water. Okay, we're going to go to editor. And this is where we need to add a few settings. So one of the settings we need to add is the base bump to give it the kind of like wavy effect to the water. So we're going to go to browse. Okay, for our base bump. And we're not going to use this. We're going to go to our uh, seamless textures. I'm going to use one of these, right? One of these. So the one I like is this one here. All right. I'm, uh, and for the bump, we're going to use pretty low values uh, because uh, if you put it too high, you, you can't see anything. So I'm going to leave it as one just to show you what it looks like uh, for this base bump. Then, I'm gonna, then, you're gonna, then you're going to realize why we need to reduce the bump. And... So let's do a IRA preview of that. Let's see what that looks like. 
All right, so as you can see, because the bump is too high, like I can't literally see anything in this in this water, right? I can't see anything. So what I need to do now is I need to reduce that bump, right? Something like 0 0.1 low values, okay? All right, so this is our, uh, our uh, the light coming through, the light rays. You can see the causistics here. Now, as you can see, it's very bright now. So again, I need to go to my spotlight and change those, right? Uh, change those settings. So the easy way to do that once I've got everything I want here is the intensity just reduce the intensity, right? So I'll go to 100 like Really easy way to reduce the intensity. What I'm going to do now as well for the plane here is I want to uh, Spread angle I actually want to increase this to like 135 uh, So we can get the causistics going and now I need to increase the brightness again. So 150 Let's put it to 80 actually. All right. That doesn't look too bad. Now, the reason why the causistics don't look that good is because my uh, my settings for the tiles are not very good. So let's just go back to the original tiles here, one, one. Uh, let's move the vertical tiles, see what that looks like, All right? So you can see what it looks like, right? I'm just moving the vertical tiles. How do I want the causistics to look like? That looks pretty good, right? The causistics. I just moved the vertical tiles. I didn't do anything. Uh, let's move the horizontal tiles now. Let's see what that looks like so we get more control. All right, this is the cool thing about, um, you know, I want my causistics like that. That's fine. All right, I am happy with that. Um, in terms of the spotlight, um, let's put that down to 125. So again, this is all to do with discovery. You're playing with the settings, trying to find out what fits your, you know, what you want it to look like. All right, cool. Um, that's okay. Now, this is where the magic happens. Uh, so we're gonna go back to that plane that's attached to the camera, our like, uh, to give our underwater effect. Okay, we're gonna go to surfaces of that. And we're gonna go to a setting called a bay. Now I did a bit more research on Obey. So like I said before, Obey is that uh, part of the of the iris shader which gives you that coloration of the water. So it gives you that coloration of the water. Um, so the lower the values of the Obey, the higher that coloration is. And uh, the, um, the lower the, so the higher it is, the less coloration. So if I did something like five, right? You're going to get very, very high values of that coloration, all right? Now, this is starting to look like something underwater, right? Something you would see that coloration. Now, five is a very, very high value. It's not something I would go with. Um, I would start off, you know, go pretty high, right? So go to like 35 maybe. And here's our causistics, right? Our causistics that everybody goes on about. Causistics, causistics, causistics. How do you do it? This is how you do it. Now, this looks absolutely amazing, right? I don't know if this comes out really good on the YouTube tutorial, but when you create this, you're going to be like, oh my God, this looks amazing, all right? Just by adding a bay, look, the water just looks like you would see a causistic pattern when you're looking through something. It looks like that, okay? It looks absolutely amazing. Um, now, mind you, these settings that I've got here on my uh, render settings are like the base. I haven't done anything to the settings at the moment, right? I haven't added... I haven't added, um, uh, notice I haven't added courses to sampler. We don't need to use that, but I haven't added all my settings that I normally use, like spectral rendering and all that. Once I turn all those settings on and I, and I do this render, right, for the, the YouTube thumbnail, it's going to look absolutely amazing. Okay. So this is with the basic settings right now. And as you can see, this is what it looks like. So there you go, folks. That is your underwater scene. Now, how amazing does that look right there? Um, it looks absolutely amazing. You got your fantastic causistics. Now, this could be used for any kind of scene that you want to do underwater, okay? Now, this is just generally, we're just covering the underwater scene, right? As a scene as by itself, right? With your particular settings of Dash Studio, it's going to look absolutely amazing um, just because of that obey setting, right? This is the power of Dash Studio, folks. Once you understand how things work, you could create whatever you want to create. Leave a comment down below if you have anything to add to this tutorial. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss out on any tutorials that are going to help you 
to achieve your goals with that studio. Also, don't forget as well, uh, we have Tiger Dragon The Rebirth, my graphic novel here. Um, I'll put the link in the description down below. We've got three different options here, whatever you guys like. It's here for you. You can pre-order that. That is available for you to pre-order. Fantastic, meaningful uh, superhero story, right? One of the things that are missing in the world are meaningful stories. Um, that's going to, if you're into like superhero stories and you're looking for something new, right? You've had enough of um, what the other other publishers are doing. I'm not going to name them. You already, name, you already know who they are. And you're looking for something new. This is for you. Um, I've also got Kofi.com forward slash Palmy Baden. Um, this is where you can do your donations, right? Your one-time donations. I've also got membership here as well. Little Tiger membership uh, where we've got the 2019 YouTube freebies from 2019. These are updated, by the way. I've got the ultimate yoga pose set for Genesis 8 male and Genesis 8 one male. That's updated for that as well. Also, you get a shout out on all YouTube videos um, on this. So when you sign up to this, your name will be scrolling across the bottom of the YouTube tutorials because you are supporting me. Thank you very much. And those of you that do actually um, join the membership, that tells me that you're committed to mastery, right? Mastery, very, very important. Uh, if you want to achieve any goal you want in your life, right? You've got to delve deep into mastery, right? You don't want to be one of these people that just create things half-hearted. You want to go all in. You want to learn as much as you can. That's what it's all about. By the way, this image here is from Tiger Dragon's Rebirth. This is actually inside that story, by the way, folks. So um, there you go. Um, that's what you can do if you want to support me, right? If you want to support me further, if you're committed to mastery, that is there for you as well. So uh, having said that, if you want to live your dream life, you must commit to mastery and I'll see you all in next week's video.